Welcome to this NPTEL Lectures on Robotics, Basic and Advanced Concepts. In this lecture, we'll look at control of constrained and parallel manipulators. In the previous lecture, we looked at control of multi-link serial manipulators. The second topic which we will look at in this lecture is Cartesian control of serial manipulators. Okay, so let's start. So, Till now, the control of serial manipulator without any constraint on joint trajectory was considered. Okay, so we looked at QD of T is given, desired trajectory, and then we tried to control the robot to achieve that QD of T. However, there was no inherent constraint on QD of T or on Q of T. Okay, in many instances, the end effector of a serial manipulator needs to trace a desired path while maintaining contact with the surface. Okay, so for example, you can think of a robot carrying, a, let's say, a grinding tool. It wants to grind the surface. Okay, so it has to trace a path on that surface on which it is grinding. At the same time, the grinding tool must press on the surface with some desired force. Okay, so this is the topic of control of control of constrained serial manipulators. Similar to this control of constrained serial manipulators, we also have parallel manipulators in which the passive and active joint variables are related by loop closure constraint equations. Okay, so there are also some constraints appear, but as we will see later, it is different than control of constrained serial manipulator. Okay, so we can control the motion of a serial manipulator with some constraint, either in joint space or Cartesian space. Okay, and as we will see later, this leads to force and hybrid position force control of a serial robot, okay? So ultimate thing is, as I gave the example, we want the end effector of a serial manipulator tracing a path on the surface and also applying a desired force. Okay, so let's look at this example of a constrained motion. So we have this planar 2R manipulator. So this is theta one and theta two. This is the X and Y axis, okay? This is the origin of the first coordinate is fixed coordinate system and we have link one and link two. So what we want is this point, end effector point P of X comma Y to trace a curve which is given by F of X Y equal to zero. So this is the fixed curve in 3D space. Okay. So if you have a fixed curve in 3D space at any instant, we'll have a tangent vector along this tangent and a normal vector to the curve, okay? So in not, in joint space, what we what do we have? We have f of x y equal to zero can be converted to some capital F theta one, theta two equal to zero, okay? How? Because f of x y, in the case of a two R manipulator, x is nothing but L one cos theta one plus L two cos theta one plus theta two, okay? We have looked at the direct kinematics of a planar robot and we can obtain the X and Y of the end effector point. So X is L1 C1, L2 C12 and L1 S1 plus L2 S12 is Y. So this F of X, Y equal to zero can be rewritten as some capital F theta one theta two. Okay, and this is simply because we know the direct kinematics equations for the planar 2R manipulator. So from f of x, y is equal to zero, we can also try and obtain x and y as a function of a parameter, phi. Okay, most of the time, the equation of a curve in, in a plane can be written in terms of a parameter phi or in parametric form. Okay, so once we obtain x and y in terms of the parameter, we should be able to at least conceptually use inverse kinematics and find theta one and theta two as functions of this of that parameter phi. Okay, so basically what do we have? Not so easy to do all the time, but conceptually we can see theta one will be related to phi, 
theta 2 will also be related to phi again using inverse kinematics okay or we will write this theta vector as some vector function of phi okay so this theta vector is theta 1 comma theta 2 so if x f of x y equal to 0 is a simple curve such as a circle okay we can also use direct kinematics of a parallel manipulator or mechanism okay so what do we mean by this so consider that this curve is given as a circle centered at l0 comma 0 and radius l3 okay so this is just an example that this curve is nothing but a circular arc of radius l3 and centered at l0 comma 0 so we have a point l, l0 comma 0 with a radius this so basically what do we have we have one link two link and then this point connected to the fixed point by another link so it becomes a four bar mechanism okay so sometimes in four bar mechanism we can write x as l0 plus l3 cross phi y as l3 sin phi which is basically what we want we want x as a function of a parameter phi and y as a function of parameter phi okay so instead of worrying about theta 1 and theta 2 we can directly write in terms of a parameter phi okay no big deal because we are just trying to find the equation of a circle the equation of a circle can be always written as in terms of cos and sine of a angle with some center a and b so a is l0 b is 0 so from theta 1 equals h of phi and theta 2 is equal to h of phi so these two functions of phi we can find theta 1 dot and theta 1 double dot so basically nothing but use chain rule we take the partial derivatives of hi with respect to phi into phi dot that is theta dot double dot is take the derivative again so we will get one term which is partial of hi in with phi into phi double dot plus second derivative of hi into phi dot into again phi dot okay so we can substitute this theta one dot and theta i double dot theta i dot and theta i double dot for i equals one and two in the equations of motion so remember the equations of motion of the plane r2 r will contains m into theta double dot plus Coriolis term plus gravity term is equal to tau 1 and tau 2. So now theta and theta double dot, theta dot and theta double dot can be substituted. So for example, theta double dot is j, some Jacobian matrix into phi double dot. Theta dot is also some Jacobian matrix into phi dot. Okay, so we can reorganize this equation as m into j of this h, this vector function h into phi double dot plus Coriolis term plus mass matrix into j dot phi dot plus g theta equals to tau. Okay, so think about it's not very hard. Basically, what we have done is we have taken theta as a function of this parameter phi, okay, which was obtained either using inverse kinematics or using analogy to a four bar mechanism if the curve was very like a arc of a circle. And then we convert everything from theta one, theta two, theta one dot, theta two dot, theta one double dot, theta two double dot into this phi dots. Okay, phi dot, phi double dot and so on. Okay, so JH denotes the Jacobian of the transformation theta to h of phi and j h dot is its time derivative straightforward. So now we can pre-multiply that previous equation by j h transpose. Okay, so what happens when we pre-multiply by j h transpose? So we have some mass matrix into phi double dot plus c another Coriolis term g bar into JH transpose tau. So what is this M bar? It is JH transpose M into J. Okay. So C is C into plus M into JH dot phi dot and so on. Okay. So what you can see here is this equation 
is nothing but a unconstrained one degree of freedom system which satisfies f of x y equal to zero. Okay, we have converted first from x y to theta one, theta two, and then again we have converted theta one to theta two to phi, and we have derived a differential equation in phi and its derivatives. Okay, so this is a single one ODE. Okay, in terms of phi and its derivatives. and this single ode can be used to design model based control schemes just like in the case of serial robot okay so we have managed to get rid of the constraint that the tip of the robot faces that curve f of x y 0 equal to 0 okay so what have we done basically jh transpose removes all information about the force normal to the surface So it's a single ODE, not very useful to design control schemes for applying force. Okay, so so this quantity here, this is like some kind of a projection. So we are projecting from theta to phi. Okay, if you want to include the force which is normal to the surface, we can compute the gradient, which is gradient of f of x y. The force normal to f of x y equal to 0 is of the form tau normal and proportional to this gradient so lambda into delta capital f theta 1 theta 2 we don't want to write in terms of x and y we can go back to write in terms of joint variables okay so where lambda t is the desired force first thing you can see is this tau end does not do any work while tracing f of x y why because tau n dot theta dot okay so work done by this normal force theta dot can be written in terms of partial of f with respect to theta 1 theta 1 dot partial of f with respect to theta 2 theta 2 dot and this is nothing but lambda of d by dt into force equal to 0 now this itself is 0 okay so this is the equation of the curve in terms of theta 1 theta 2 so the normal force does not do any work while the tip is tracing the curve on this f of x y equal to 0 so we can have a kind of combined force which is tau is lambda times the gradient of this function plus tau along the phi direction or along the tangent okay so we can use this tau phi to trace a desired path without violating the constraint f of x y equal to 0 okay so we go back to our basic notion of a computed torque control scheme we can write tau phi is alpha phi tau prime plus beta phi where what is alpha phi okay that is m mass matrix into jh beta is c plus m into j dot phi dot plus g theta and tau prime is pi double dot plus kv into e dot plus kp into e where e is phi d minus phi so very similar ideas to what we did for the serial robot and computer top control scheme so we can choose this controller gains kp and kv to meet the performance requirements so if you want over damp so we have to choose kv as 2 times square root of kp and so on okay and this way we make sure that the manipulator always keeps in contact with f of x y equal to 0 why because f of x y equal to 0 is always satisfied we have derived this phi based on f of x y equal to 0 okay the terms lambda t into gradient of f theta 1 theta 2 and tau phi do not affect each other because one is in normal to the surface one is tangent to the surface okay so what do we have we have a controller which looks like this that the torque input is proportional to the gradient and plus the tangent direction tau phi where tau phi is given by alpha tau prime plus beta like any other model based stuff and then we can choose kp and kv to satisfy the performance requirements okay so as you can see this is fairly complicated 
Okay, it is not really, really practical for a six degree of freedom manipulator. If you have six degree of freedom manipulator, I will not be able to get rid of these or obtain this phi and then get rid of theta one through theta six and do inverse kinematics for uh, this complicated six degree of freedom robot. Okay. But we will see later that we can use something called as a Cartesian control schemes. Remember, we had done one simulation with Cartesian control, and it is much, much easier to do it using Cartesian coordinates. So in parallel manipulator, the loop closure constraint is given by this. OK, we have loop closure constraints. So it is some eta of q, which is theta and phi equal to 0. We can obtain the equations of motion in terms of Lagrange multipliers and Q contains both actuated and passive joint variables. This psi and lambda are similar to the Jacobian matrix JH and lambda for the two are serial manipulated with constraints. Okay, so it is sort of similar idea. We have some variables which are related to the some other variables using that loop closure constraint equation. In the case of the 2R serial robot, we had x and y related by, related by f of x, y equal to 0. And then we obtained this Jacobian of this h function, where h was theta 1 related to some h of phi and so on. So similar ideas are occurring here, which is why we are also considering constraint of uh, control of parallel manipulators in the same lecture. The key difference, though, is that we don't need to control constraint forces rising out of loop closure constraints. OK, so in the case of a 2R robot, we also wanted to control the force, which is normal to the surface. And if you think about it, the force, which is normal to the surface, happens because you are trying to trace a path on the surface or you are trying to satisfy that constraint. Okay. However, in parallel robots, there is no such issue or notion of trying to satisfy the constraint forces corresponding to the passive joints, which are related to the active joints using the loop closure constraints. Okay. So what do we have? We have tau as only non-zero elements only for the n actuated joints. Okay. So again, you can directly use the equations after eliminating lambda. So the equations of motion of a parallel robot, remember we had obtained this as mq double dot is equal to f into some psi transpose psi m inverse psi transpose whole inverse and then psi m inverse f plus psi dot q dot where psi was the matrix of k and k star derived from the partial derivatives of the constraint equation and psi dot was the derivative of the psi matrix, the constraint matrix. So we had m plus n second order differential equations here after eliminating the lambda. And these m plus n equations of motion can be written as mq double dot plus p of q q dot, everything taken this side, except this tau part, which is in f. And, in, and we can write it at least conceptually as aq into tau. OK, so in the case of a normal serial robot, we have MQ into CQQ dot and G and so on, which is all here and equal to tau. But now we have some AQ into tau. OK, so again, from control law partitioning, we can now consider AQ of tau is alpha tau prime plus beta. And then we can choose alpha and beta as mq and bq q dot respectively for the model based control part. One thing to note is this aq is not a full rank. Why? Because all the taus are not there. Some of the taus are zero. Okay, the tau corresponding to the passive joint variables in q are not there, are zero. So, how do we find tau finally, the actuated joint tau? we need to use some kind of a pseudo inverse. So we choose non-zero elements of tau prime for PD control with appropriate gain matrices, KP and KV. Okay, tau prime also does not contain all the 
uh, taus. The motion of the actuated joints will not violate the loop closure constraints because we have used the loop closure constraint equations to derive the control scheme. Okay. The model-based term involves active and passive variables. Okay, so M of Q, so Q contains both theta and phi, the actuated variables as well as the passive joint variables. Okay, so typically passive joint variables are not measured. Okay, why, why, why would you want to spend money on sensors and measure the passive joint variables? However, the passive joint variables can be estimated using direct kinematics equation. Okay. So the use of direct kinematics for estimating passive joints variables and their rates make the model-based control of parallel manipulators much more complex. Okay, because see, we can measure theta, but I have to solve direct kinematics. I have to estimate the passive variables and their rates, which is theta dot into k, k theta dot plus k star phi dot equal to zero. Then I have to worry about k star being not singular, all kinds of complications arise when we are trying to use model-based control for parallel robots. Okay, and also, as in serial robots, we cannot avoid problems or issues arising out of lack of knowledge of parameters. Okay, so we will not know the link lengths. There are many more link lengths. We do not know the friction at the joints, both active and passive joints. So, estimating all these dynamics is much more complicated and causes issues. Okay, so as I said, the joint based control of a robot trying to trace a path on a surface or basically constrained motion is difficult, okay, especially for six degrees of freedom robot. So this is done much easier using something called Cartesian control of serial manipulators. So which is what we will discuss now. Okay, so as I mentioned, it is very difficult to implement joint space control of serial manipulator with constraints. Okay, the constraint is almost always in terms of end effector position and or orientation. So the tip must trace some path. And more often than not, closed form expression for inverse kinematics do not exist. Okay, only for things like Puma, or a robot with the last three joints intersecting, we can hope to get some uh, expressions for the joint variables. Otherwise, it is some 8 degree or 16 degree polynomial, and we have to use numerical techniques. So, and also for simple curves, it is not possible to convert to a simple parallel mechanism. So for the curve as a circle centered at one point on the origin of the x or in some point on the x-axis, we saw that it could become a four bar mechanism. And hence, again, we can get rid of theta one and theta two in terms of a parameter phi, which is the rotation of this fictitious link. Okay. But that is not possible to do for complicated uh, curves. So we need to develop control scheme which use desired trajectories specified in terms of Cartesian or task specs variables. So it is specified using X, Y, Z, the position of the end effector and the orientation of the end effector. Okay, so ideally we should not be using inverse kinematics because inverse kinematics is computationally intensive. We would like a model based feedback linearization type of control scheme but in terms of Cartesian variables, position and orientation. Okay, so can this be done? Yes. Okay, so basic case, the step is that we need to write the equations of motion in terms of Cartesian or task based variables, X. Okay, so basically X contains small X, Y, Z, which is the position and some representation of the orientation, let's say three Euler angles. So we can write the external force which is acting on the end effector and the moment which is this F script style F is M X Q into X double dot plus Coriolis term plus gravity term. So this subscript X script X means that they are in terms of the Cartesian variables. Okay, this Q and Q dot can still stay there. We don't need to actually use inverse kinematics. We'll see later. 
we have already derived that this external force which is or moment which is acting at the end effector can be related to the joint torques by tau is j transpose f remember in statics we looked at what is the force or the torque required at the joint to maintain equilibrium and was some j transpose f likewise using inverse kinematics we can show that this mass matrix in terms of the cartesian variables can be written in terms of the mass matrix with joint variables using j inverse transpose and j inverse the coriolis term in terms of cartesian variables is of course much more complicated so it is j inverse transpose c minus m into j inverse into j dot q dot and gravity term is j inverse transpose into g of q okay so j q minus t denotes the inverse of the transpose of the jacobian matrix okay so the inverse kinematics is not required in the control why because i am still leaving q i am not trying to get rid of q and writing q is inverse of x okay inverse kinematics of x we need to use inverse jacobian to compute this left hand side okay but they can be computed symbolically and only once i don't need to do it in the loop okay so if i have these expressions somehow let's say i have computed after spending lot of time in a computer using symbolic algebra i can obtain the mass matrix using cartesian coordinates keeping q as it is coriolis term and gravity term okay so we have to use j inverse so that requires a lot of effort but it can be done once symbolically so now let's continue we want to de design our model based cartesian controller so similar to the joint space control scheme we assume a control law of the form alpha x f prime plus beta x this is the external force and moment acting on the end effector so we choose alpha x as mx beta x as cx plus gx and then just like in the serial robot case we have we end up with f prime is equal to x double dot okay and we can choose so this is like a unit mass or a unit inertia being acted by a force f prime or a moment f prime contains both a translation force f and moment m so we choose this curly f prime as x d double dot plus k b x into e dot plus k p x into e so remember here e is a cartesian error not the joint space error and we will substitute this f prime back into this and then that into the equations of motion we will get e double dot plus k b x into e dot plus k p x into e equal to 0 so we get a linear decoupled error equation of the form like this exactly the same idea and same approach as we did for the serial robot okay in joint space so but finally we have to apply joint torques okay there is a external force acting on the end effector but there is you no know, there are no rockets or something which allows you to apply forces at the end effector so we can only apply for torques at the using motors at the joints so how do i convert this f to torque we can use tau is j transpose f okay so this is what the mod block diagram of a cartesian model based control scheme look like okay so we start from this interior so this is the robot arm the input is torque okay so we apply some voltage to the motors and we get some torque we measure q and q dot okay using encoders and tachometers or some other device from q we can do direct kinematics k i n q means direct kinematics of the, using the direct kinematics formula of the robots we can get position and orientation of the end effector so from q and q dot we can do jacobian and we can find the linear and angular velocity of the end effector so this is x dot correct then with q and q dot 
okay we can substitute in this cartesian coriolis term and cartesian gravity term we can also use this q to obtain jacobian transpose and then we can also obtain fm of x okay the cartesian mass matrix so this 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 and this all these things are happening inside the computer okay there are some programs which uses q and q dot to obtain the position and orientation of the end effector the velocities at the end effector the cartesian coriolis and gravity term the cartesian mass matrix okay and the jacobian matrix of the robot so we can also use this x and x dot so xd minus x dot will give you this e dot multiplied by a proper derivative gain kbx xp minus x will give you the error in terms of cartesian variables multiplied by proportional gain and we add this xd double dot and here we will get f prime okay so what do we have here f prime into mx plus all these things and eventually we get f here which you multiply by j transpose and you get tau okay so as you can see in this block diagram we are never using inverse kinematics anywhere we are using forward kinematics or direct kinematics we are also using jacobian matrix and as you can see we don't need to get rid of q because q is available we can use the measured q to compute mxq jq cxq q dot gxq and so on okay so we will look at this fr a little later but we can think of that at this place we can also add some external force which is i am denoting by fr now so no inverse kinematics used direct kinematics used to estimate x and x dot if you have vision or other sensor we don't even need to use direct kinematics we can directly measure x and x dot okay so this scheme was proposed by khatib okay and basically he said that you can use this scheme to do real time obstacle avoidance okay so this was his idea so what he said was that we can had the synthetic force fr okay at this place this is a synthetic force it is a computed force okay and it looks like the it is of this form so this force is the summation of all these forces from n obstacles in the robot field of view and each of these forces is ki divided by ri to the power n where r i is the distance from the i th obstacle so it is like a inversely proportional to the distance from the obstacle so we generate a force which is inversely proportional to the distance of the obstacle not directly inversely sum to the power r i to the power n so if you now choose k i and n properly so what do we have we have a force which is as seen by the robot which is generated due to the obstacle okay and we make sure that this force fr is repulsive okay and we choose ki and n cleverly such that this repulsive force drops off quickly so if the robot is close to an obstacle it will see a large force if it is far away from an obstacle it doesn't see anything so this n should be more than 2 or 3 and k should be some appropriate number so what is happening what is happening is this control force drives the robot along a desired trajectory okay when near an obstacle this fr is more dominant okay and it repels the robot away from the obstacle so let's go back to this figure once more so at this place we have f okay f prime into m plus this c and so on at this place we have f plus fr so f is driving the for robot to follow this desired trajectory xd xd dot and xd double dot but when 
it comes close to an obstacle, FR takes over. So at this place, it is FR plus F, but FR is much long, larger. So it is a repulsive force. Okay, so it repels the robot away from the obstacle. So this is what he meant was real time obstacle avoidance. So as the controller is working, as the controller is making sure that the robot is following a desired trajectory, it will also sense the repulsive forces from the obstacle and act accordingly. Okay, so this, this is very, very popular and was popular or even now popular for mobile robots. So if you have a mobile robot which is moving around and if it knows that there are these obstacles, it can find the path in some sense based on the control scheme which will avoid all these obstacles. Okay, so with this, I'm going to stop here. So in this lecture, we have looked at Cartesian control of a robot. Okay, so we are going to design a controller using the position and orientation of the end effector of the robot. And also, as I showed you, we can make sure that it avoids obstacles. Okay, in the next lecture, we'll look at force control of manipulators and hybrid position force control of manipulators.